Indications for intubation and mechanical ventilation include four broad categories. An inability to adequately maintain oxygenation is called hypoxic respiratory failure. Inadequate ventilation or elimination of carbon dioxide is called hypercapnic respiratory failure. An inability to protect the airway, such as during anesthesia for a procedure or after a neurologic insult, such as traumatic brain injury or stroke, is another indication for intubation. A non-sustainable work of breathing leads to respiratory failure and a need for ventilatory support. Basic modes of ventilation can be divided into two broad categories, control modes and support modes. Support modes are used in spontaneously breathing patients, meaning that the respiratory rate is set by the patient's spontaneous effort. Support modes include pressure support, CPAP, bi-level, and PEEP. There is no rate set on the machine. Control modes deliver breaths using a set rate the provider programs on the mechanical ventilator. Control modes deliver breaths at the rate set by the provider using either volume or pressure-driven breaths. Control modes require the provider set a respiratory rate on the ventilator machine. The provider must also determine if the breaths will be delivered using a set tidal volume or using a set inspiratory pressure. Look at the example on the top panel. The ventilator is set using a control mode because the respiratory rate is set. It is set at 10 breaths per minute. The ventilator is set to deliver the breaths using volume control because the tidal volume is set at 500 milliliters. For each of the 10 breaths delivered in one minute, the ventilator will deliver 500 milliliter tidal volumes. If you were presenting this data to others, you would report, the patient is receiving volume control ventilation at a rate of 10 breaths per minute and a tidal volume of 500 milliliters. Now, look at the example on the lower panel. The ventilator is set using a control mode because the respiratory rate is set. It is set at 10 breaths per minute. The ventilator is set to deliver the breaths using pressure control because the inspiratory pressure, or P-inspired, is set to 20 centimeters of water. For each of the 10 breaths delivered in one minute, the ventilator will apply 20 centimeters of water. If you were presenting this data to others, you would report, the patient is receiving pressure control ventilation at a rate of 10 and an inspired pressure of 20 centimeters of water. Let's look at the volume control panel settings more closely. Tidal volume is set at 500 milliliters and is visualized as equal to the area under the curve. The waveform has a triangular shape. Peak inspiratory pressure depends on compliance but is measured here as P max, which equals 30 centimeters of water. The rate, which equals 10, is one breath every six seconds. The fraction of inspired oxygen being delivered is set at 25%. The I to E ratio describes the time spent in inhalation versus the time spent in exhalation. Here, the I to E ratio is set at one to one which means three seconds are spent in inhalation and three seconds are spent in exhalation. Learners should note that a normal I to E ratio is not one to one. A normal I to E ratio is one to two or one to three. Please note that the ventilator panel reports both the set parameters programmed by the provider and the measured parameters for each breath delivered. Although all ventilator front panels are different, the set parameters are seen here in blue boxes. The measured parameters are reported in the black boxes above. Now, let's look more closely at the pressure control panel settings. 
Inspiratory pressure is set at 20 centimeters of water. Tidal volume depends on compliance and is equal to the area under the curve. The waveform has a square shape. Notice that exhaled tidal volume is measured and is listed as VTE. It is reported to equal 475 milliliters. The rate is 10 breaths per minute or one breath every six seconds. The IDE ratio is one to two. Thus, two seconds are spent in inspiration and four seconds are spent in expiration. Again, note the set parameters seen here in blue boxes and the measured parameters reported in the black boxes above. Remember that control modes require the provider set a respiratory rate and determine whether the breath will be delivered using a set tidal volume or a set inspiratory pressure. Even though the provider sets the respiratory rate on the ventilator, it is still possible for the patient to take more breaths than the number set. For example, if the set rate is 10 breaths per minute, the patient may breathe 12 or 14 or 22 or any other number of breaths greater than the rate that the provider sets. How the ventilator responds to each additional patient generated breath depends on mode options set on the ventilator by the provider. To select a control mode, providers must choose between assist control or synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. In assist control, the ventilator gives a full ventilator breath at the set rate and for each additional breath triggered by the patient's effort. In SIMV, the ventilator gives a full ventilator breath per the set rate only. SIMV is often paired with pressure support ventilation, which can support any additional breaths above the set rate. The support modes are for spontaneously breathing patients. There is no rate set on the ventilator. Support is most often given using pressure and can be given using pressure support ventilation, bi-level, CPAP, or PEEP. Pressure support ventilation is used with spontaneously breathing patients who set their own rate. With each patient-initiated breath, the ventilator will apply an inspiratory pressure that is set by the provider. This pressure is only applied during inspiration, but augments the patient's effort, decreases the work of breathing, and may improve gas exchange. PEEP is positive end expiratory pressure. It is applied continuously through both inspiration and exhalation, but has its greatest effect at the end of expiration by preventing alveoli from collapsing, therefore decreasing atelectasis. PEEP improves oxygenation by decreasing closing capacity, preventing intrapulmonary shunting. PEEP can be added to any mode of ventilation and plays a key role in the management of ARDS. When PEEP and pressure support ventilation are added together, it is termed bilevel. PEEP is present throughout the respiratory cycle, but the pressure support is only applied during inspiration. Therefore, there are two levels of pressure applied. It is important to note that the pressure support is in addition to the value of PEEP. So the total inspiratory pressure is the pressure support ventilation plus the PEEP. CPAP is much like PEEP in that pressure is applied throughout both inspiration and expiration. The pressures applied aim to hold airways open with positive pressure to prevent airway collapse. CPAP uses high flow gas sources to maintain positive airway pressures. As gas flow increases, PEEP actually becomes CPAP. CPAP is often used to assist emphysema patients with eliminating excess carbon dioxide since it prevents the larger airways from closing.